So looking at Snell's law, now we can put it in action. So let's look at an example here. So now we have light of wavelength 630 nanometers in air, and it enters water, making an angle of 50 degrees with the normal initially. And we're told that the index of refraction of water is 1.33. And now we want to know the angle of refraction of the light. I think before starting anything else, it helps just to try to draw this situation. So let me just draw myself what's going on here. So it goes, it enters water. So it starts off in air and it enters water. That means I'm going to label it then. So I'm going to say this right here is air. And this right here is water. That's nice to know. And if I'm looking at refraction, I probably need to draw myself a little normal, something that's 90 degrees to the surface here. And I know that it enters with an angle of 50 degrees with the normal. So that means I know that this angle right here that it comes in at, this angle right here, I know that's 50 degrees. So that's what I know. Now what happens afterwards? Don't know. So this right here is going to be some different angle. And so we'll have to sort of try to calculate that. That's what we're trying to find here. The question is find the angle of refraction of a light. In other words, what's theta w? So we can call things, uh, I mean, we can use a short form here. We can actually say air, we'll call that Na. That's the index of refraction in air. And we're going to say, well, that, we weren't told the index of refraction of air. That's because it's assumed to be 1. And the index of refraction of water, we're told, is 1.33. So that we know. And this is all we need. We also know then that, well, we can say this is theta air and this is theta water. So if we want to find the angle of refraction, well, we just need to try to find theta w. So the question is, how do we find theta w when we have theta a, na, and nw? So I go back to my Snell's law and I use basically just this and this. I'm just going to set this equal to this. So n1 over n2 equals sine theta 2 over sine theta 1. So I'm going to do exactly that. So in this case right here, it doesn't matter how I do it, I can call it a over w. Let's say maybe I'll do that. So n a over n w is going to be equal to sine theta w over sine theta a. You notice you don't always have to call them 1 and 2. I like to call them what they really are. But the trick is, if this goes A over W for your indices of refraction, then everything else goes W over A. Okay, so remember this, these ones, everything else here goes opposite to what these are. That's the sort of main thing from Snell's law here, I think. So if we do this, well, we know these numbers. We can actually fill in things. I mean, the goal here is to find theta W. That's what we want. We want to find this. That's what we're looking for. Let's try to isolate this. Well, then we could say that uh, sine theta w is equal to, well, I can get rid of this sine theta a by multiplying both sides. So I could say n a times sine theta a divided by n w. Because that's why I still have this. I just have this coming in front. Now, the thing is, I can actually fill in these values. So n a is just 1, so that's easy, 1 times sine theta a, well theta a is 50, so I could say 1 times sine of 50, divide that by nw, which is 1.33. Well, this 1 times something, that's just dumb, that's just 1, so that's easy. And that's what sine theta w is. If I want theta w on its own, the angle of refraction here, it's just going to be the inverse sine of that answer, because that's how you undo uh, sine. See, sine theta w is this value. But if I want just theta, I have to undo sine. And the way you undo it, you do inverse sine of whatever that answer was here. So sine theta, oh, sorry, whatever sine of 50 over 1.33 is. So I'm going to use my good old pal, the calculator here. I'm going to see what I can do. Let's just see what happens. Well, I need to make sure, first of all, that my calculator is in the right mode. I'm going to have to make sure it's in degree mode. So that's what I'm going to do here is try to do that. So let's do it. So let's do mode and do degree. Yep, there it is. And then I'm going to take that and actually calculate it. So sine of 50 is some number. There it is. And divide that by 1.33. 
we get that answer. And I take that and do the inverse sign. So that's in this case, this little blue one. So inverse sign of the answer. That's what I wanted here. And I get a value of 35 degrees. So that means I can state then that that's this value here. So the angle of refraction of light, in other words, this angle right here, is going to be 35 degrees. And notice that this angle here was less than this. That's because if you go from something that's optically thinner to something that's optically thicker, then the angle here gets less. Whereas if it did the opposite, then it would be the opposite. So let's say it went from water to air, then this angle, the refracted angle, would be greater than the incident. But in this case, you don't have to memorize that, though. Just calculate it. And you can figure it out. Well, part B of the question wants the wavelength of the light in the water. Now, the wavelength, remember, is the symbol is lambda. So I want lambda w. That's what I want. But I know lambda air, at least. I'm told that. I'm told that the wavelength of light in air is 630 nanometers. So I know that this is 630 nanometers. Remember, that's times 10 to the minus 9 meters. That's what this means. This is something that's visible light. This will look red, turns out. So this right here, this will look red here. Now, I want to find the wavelength. But I know a couple of things. I can use Snell's law. If I want to find the wavelengths, well, I can use the speeds, or I can use the angles, or I can use the index of refraction. I may as well use the index of refraction. That way there's no way I'm going wrong. So n1 over n2 equals lambda 2 over lambda 1. So in this case, then, I can say that. So I'm going to use, let's say, n air over nw equals lambda w over lambda air. Again, remember, it's only the n's that do the opposites. Everything else sort of follows the same way. In other words, these ones right here, they go 2 over 1, 2 over 1, 2 over 1. But it's the n's that go 1 over 2. They're the opposite to these ones. So n over 1, uh, sorry, n1 over n2 is lambda 2 over lambda 1. That leads to n air over nw equals lambda w over lambda air. Well, I'm trying to find the wavelength in water. I want to isolate for lambda w. To do that, I multiply the lambda a over. So I can say then that lambda w is n a lambda a over n w. Some people don't like to look at it this way. Some people like to put in the numbers. Remember, n a was the index of refraction in air. And we know that that value is 1. So n a is 1. Lambda a is 630. So I'm just going to say 630 nanometers over nw, which in this case right here, I need to know that. That's the index of refraction in water. So that's 1.33. Now, this is where I think this question becomes important. A lot of students would, well, maybe students just forget and just forget to um, convert nanometers to meters. In this case, you'd actually be okay if you were sloppy, for example, and just said, Lambda w is going to be this nanometers over this. It turns out this will work. And that's because I want my, my wavelength in water also in nanometers. And if I wanted that in nanometers, then leaving this in nanometers works. In other words, I can just say, well, fine. That means I'll get, let's see here. So in this case, I'll just say 630 nanometers divided by 1.33. That'll give me an answer in nanometers. So that'll give me, uh, what, 473 nanometers, let's just say. So approximately 473. So maybe someone forgot and just was sloppy, but that's the answer. If you thought about it carefully, you can actually do this. And again, that's just because these units here, if this has no units. So because of that, nanometers divided by something with no units gives you an answer in nanometers. Well, that's great. What you could have done, however, you could have actually converted it. You could have said lambda w is equal to 630 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. Divide that by 1.33. So then you would get an answer, and you would actually just do it then. So you would actually calculate 630 times 10 to the minus 9 divided by 1.33, and that would give you an answer. And of course, that answer would be very much like what I just got, except it's off by a factor of 10 to the minus 9. So for example, let's just say you tried it. I just want to show you what it would look like. So 630 
times 10 to the minus 9. That's what 630 nanometers is. It's otherwise 6.3 times 10 to the minus 7. I would divide that by 1.33. I'd say, great, my answer then is 4.73 times 10 to the minus 7. So I would sort of, I would answer that. So 4.73 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. And then I would have to think, well, how many nanometers is that? It turns out that's 473. So I mean, yes, this is a way of doing it, but this is actually the sloppy way in this case was actually quite fast. But basically, this just helps us to know what happens here. So in this situation, light that started off pretty red, because 630 nanometers is, is quite red looking, and after it went through this material, it became 473, which is pretty blue. So that's actually pretty interesting. The light changes color and it changed angles. It started off at 50 degrees and it came out at 35 degrees.